Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. And today I want to show you a quick uh, digital painting tip and trick. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Right now I've got a basic painting that I'm working on. Uh, just, I don't know, I've got an hour or so into this and just uh, blocking in large shapes and trying to work on composition first and lighting elements and kind of get the whole thing going before I start getting in there and detailing. Uh, I've added a little bit of details, but I want to show you a quick way to add like some windows into your structures. So say that you've got, uh, I'll add a little bit more detail to the background real quick to show you how I'm blocking this in. Um, I also created a brush that was just a square brush. It's real basic, easy to do. Uh, so it's a large square. And then you can obviously transfer uh, pin pressure through uh, transfer here, pin pressure, pin pressure, and that is it. There's nothing else. Um, uh, no spacing, I guess. That would be the only other thing. Or down to one. It doesn't go to zero. Uh, other than that, that's it. And you just start using it. Now, I'm working in a black and white segmented uh, background effect with some color layers throughout. Uh, I get a little bit layer crazy. You really don't have to do all that. But I like being able to separate certain elements and work on them individually. Uh, but it gets tricky to name them and things like that. So, uh, so background main. <clears throat> excuse me. I'll go ahead and work on that. And all I'm basically doing, I'll zoom into an area up here. I'll take this uh, blocky kind of brush and I'll just darken and lighten, you know, trying to keep in mind my, my light source as I go and just overlapping sweeps. I can, you know, put this to 100% opacity and press really light. I usually work at about 50 with a brush like this. It just depends on what I'm doing. And I'll keep obviously my light source in mind and just block in shapes and just very very basic and just kind of work through there and try to find some forms so that's all I'm doing at this stage of the painting um, but that's not what the uh, I want this to be a quick explanation of a certain thing I get a lot of comments that are like you know we like watching you do an entire piece but could you sp explain things in more specifics? And I get that because it gets a little bit too much to understand if I try to explain everything that goes into making a piece like this. So that's all I'm really doing with the blocking in of the shapes. Uh, very basic. But I want to show you this brush first and then also show you what else it's very capable of. Uh, let's go ahead and add some windows to this middle build, uh, which is right here. So let me add a layer. But you don't have to, but well, I guess for this part you do. So uh, let's go windows on middle build or whatever. And if you're going to separate the buildings like this, you can also give them groups, which I probably should do. It makes it a bit easier. And now what I want to show you how I created these windows pretty quickly and uh, easily enough. Um, you know, because I think that, well, let me show you the difference. For instance, if you do windows like this, I think they have a clean look. And I actually didn't get in there and do as much as I could have. I, I actually could have. Did some other effects that I'll show you real quick. Uh, and then these are painted in by hand. So from the distance, maybe they look roughly the same. I don't know. To me, these middle ones still look cleaner and a little bit better read. Um, but I, I think it's good to mix it up to have a little bit of hand-painted stuff and more dynamically or created stuff. Uh, just gives it, a you know, the painting a, a little bit more areas of interest. So let me show you how to do those. So we got our separate layer. I've got my square brush. I can either press really hard. I can hold shift, press really hard. Oh, my layer too far back. I think it is. Yeah, that would be the reason. Sorry. Okay, so I can create one stroke. And even if the stroke isn't uh, saturated enough or enough uh, opacity, another quick workaround of that. Um, I don't know if this is the best way to do it. Let me bring it all the way to the top so there's no other layers getting in the way. Uh, so you don't want to repaint it, you just hit Command-J a couple times. And then Command-E down, uh, watching your layers, obviously. You don't want to accidentally uh, merge onto a different layer. But see how real quick there I made it fully opaque? Uh, just a little quick workaround. If you don't want to erase it and then up your opacity in your brush, whatever. Uh, it's good to think of Photoshop like there's a lot of different ways to accomplish things. So you don't always have to get everything perfect the first time out. You can edit as you go. So, for instance, I'll add the windows. Um, I've got to come up with a good concept for the windows as I'm designing it. Let me actually delete that one. Command-T. I'm going to stretch these in. I want to do some really 
Uh, I'm going to try some really thin, elongated windows first. Uh, Command T, I can stretch this up. Okay, hold Alt, drag over. That'll give us a copy really quickly. Figure out the spacing that you think will look, you know, dynamic enough, uh, but show just enough separation where it's, it doesn't disappear into this uh, structure. Command E to, uh, and I want to say on a PC it's Control E, but um, I'm not sure there. But yeah, I think it is. So all right, hold Alt again, move it over. Now keep in mind a quick way if you don't if you're not good at eyeballing and moving these over to the side just far enough. A quick way to do this and get it perfect is to zoom in and actually overlap the last bar. Command E, hold Alt, move it over, overlap the last bar. And if you want it really perfect, you can tone down the opacity of the layer and you'll be able to see if it's not perfectly overlapped. But that's, that's getting a little bit too much into it. I don't think you need to go quite that far. And the process takes off slow, but then as you get a few more of these, it goes really quickly. Uh, another thing that I recommend is saving elements like this. So once you get a good window pattern and it's nice and straight like this, save it. And you can do this really easily by right clicking here, duplicate layer, go to new right here under document, file new. You can even name it, but I just hit OK. Now it's going to make the document window really large. Let me drop something in the background here. <clears throat> Keep the layer separated. And then just select around it, image crop. Let's see what size that is. This is 777K, good number. And you zoom in, it's pretty good till you get really close. So you, that's that's adequate. You know, that's people are always asking me like what resolution, what size. It's I do everything visually, basically. If it looks good at the size I think I'm gonna use it at, that's what I go with. Then secondary, I can go to that and look at it and go. Oh, okay, it's 1.6 by 7.3 in inches at 150 resolution, whatever. Those are just numbers, but it, it visually it looks good. So I would save this out and call it window pattern one. I'm not going to do that. I've got a bunch saved, but that's another way to streamline your work. So another tip there for you. Okay, so now here's our, our basic window pattern. Now we can also, let me hit command J. That's why I get layer intensive because I do stuff like this. Let me look at what it would look like if I put segments in it. I'll use the same square brush to 100 opacity and I can play around with this pattern before I go to distort it into place and I go okay do I want to do something like this for my windows. I'm just eyeballing this real quick see if I even like it. That's why I made a backup copy. You know because I want something that looks a little bit more design oriented than than you know, I don't want it to look too basic. It's supposed to be like a futuristic modern city, you know, so it's got to have a little bit more design. Uh, I actually started off wanting to put like triangular windows into this stuff, but I didn't like the look. Uh, I may still go back to that on a few of these builds. I have, you know, got to figure it out as I go. So let's try to distort these into place. So I just go to edit distort, move these around. Uh, your perspective doesn't have to be perfect. I'm obviously going off what's already there. And just visually lining it up you know if you want perfect perspective uh, create you know really strong perspective grids and use those in your work um, it's not entirely necessary if you if you paint through it uh, and you can look at perspective decently enough and obviously this is a distorted perspective I've got this building up here that has almost no perspective uh, I'll add to it as I go but there's there's lots of ways to create perspective grids uh, in other programs uh, and in Photoshop uh, and there's there's tutorials for that online so just go ahead and look for that but this will be just on creating these windows so you see I just distorted them in, into place really quickly uh, now there's a few things you can do here you can try different um, well not multiply they disappear <laughs> uh, screen they're pretty much like normal mode overlay gives you kind of the soft look which almost by itself immediately starts to work because it it kind of takes on the properties of the other layers and it gives you you know a soft kind of look not quite what I'm looking for though if you notice here I've got a little bit of highs and lows as far as highlighting so I don't want to go with that let me try a few more I like to just dance around with these I don't always know exactly what they're gonna do uh, I think the one I go to for this is actually just 
believe it or not, normal. Um, <clears throat> but I do some other effects to it. One, you can start knocking down the opacity. Uh, two, you can just, I'm going to create one more copy. No, I shouldn't, but I'm going to. And then take the soft erase, soft shadow brush right there. And I can just basically, well, let me turn the opacity way down and just softly kind of give it some highs and lows so it's not so visually uh, out there, intrusive or whatever. Uh, the other thing is it doesn't need to be in the forefront of the uh, design anymore. So let's bring this back to, where's our middle build? Right there. So let's just bring it right over there so our other shapes and things are in front of it. Just keep soft erasing that down see what we get there so we can give it a little bit more of a natural look again we can hit command J and we can brighten up the uh, white components a little bit more convert that down and just kind of play around with those two effects that's one way to do it um, and then you can eventually just merge it down to the painting portion as long as you're content with what you got and then you can also use like dodge and burn to punch up your highlights and do different things that way you know, and then you always check it from a distance. I'm also looking at my navigator window over here to make sure it's, you know, it's, it's still a little bit bright. So I'll go ahead and command alt Z back a few times. And I'm actually going to get rid of that one. I want to show you a different effect. So there's my initial layer again. Make one more. I'm going to try this one with the uh, elongated uh, narrow narrow windows. Now, the other reason why I like doing it like this is because, you know, you see I'm able to go back, edit, try different things really quickly um, once I've done it this way. Now, if I painted those windows in, it's totally a different process. I can't nearly as quickly uh, go back and make changes. I'm not saying it takes a tremendous amount of time to make changes because digital painting itself, once you figure out your workflow, it can be really quick. But it's, it's also, you know taking certain steps like this that allow you to be, you know, edit your work uh, quickly and, and more efficiently. All right, so we drop that back again. All right, now the thing I wanted to show you is that you've also got your layer effects. You know, you don't see a lot of people mess with these uh, for some reason, and, and they sometimes can yield some pretty neat results. I don't know if there's going to be enough resolution here to do it, but let's, let's try it. So if we go with Inner Shadow... We gotta tone it way back because I'm trying to get just a little bit of a what do you call it? Um, like a recessed shadow from the edge of the window. You move the uh, effect around. See, I'm just slightly moving that around. I can play with the opacity of it. So this little circle here is controlling the angle of the light. This is controlling the size of the effect. I'm trying to get it just barely visible. And this, <clears throat> excuse me, this would work better if I did it on a larger file off to the side and then imported this in. And then you could really get in here and add just enough shadowing and stuff like that. But it's not going to be very necessary because that's pretty much the effect I want right there. Just where you're seeing a bit of depth into the uh, structure. And from back here, I don't know that you even see it a whole lot, but if you know, if I'm trying to make this hyper realistic and, you know, I'm not going to make the entire design detailed, but my focal point is going to be on this uh, middle build here. So in this area, I want some good detail. In this area, I want some good detail. I'll probably blend off other areas. So, so to me, this is, you know, necessary. So that's how I'm able to get a pretty quick effect there. Now, once you're happy with this effect, just right click. Uh, what is it? Rasterize layer, I believe. Yeah, it takes the effect off. It merges it down into just the artwork. If you leave that icon there, you can always double click here and, and kind of re-edit, which is nice. Uh, but I'm happy with that effect. So again, I'll merge it or what was it? Rasterize layer style. And again, I can go back and play with like the opacities. You know, I don't want it to be too overly, uh, you know, bright or whatever. I can also now Let's bump the opacity back up. I can go layer, layer style, color overlay. And I can give it a, 
a little bit of a color overlay, a layer effect, and it can be, you know, say I want some orange windows or something, green, whatever. You know, just play around with it, see whatever looks good. I just want a bit of a, a light blue overcast to it. So I'll turn the saturation down real low. And then I can also play with the effects in here and see, you know, what effect works best. I'll, I'll probably go with multiply with a low opacity. Again, I can drop the opacity here if it's too uh, intrusive or whatever. And that's it. So, I mean, just by doing that, you can create all kinds of various window effects and you can save them out and you can really streamline your work. So at any rate, um, hopefully this has shown you something and how you can create your own digital paintings and add effects to them. And if you like the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. It always helps me progress the channel. And, uh, you know, check back on my DeviantArt and you can see a completed version of this. I usually do uh, works in progress and kind of upload you know, stages of it as I progress through the painting so you can see the uh, workflow a little bit. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and we will talk to you soon.